How is it going guys? It's Eclipse here and welcome to an episode where we look at how you can become great within light tanks, within World of Tanks console and yeah let's take a look at how you can actually perform admirably within the gameplay to showcase your own skill and also get better at World of Tanks. Hopefully these videos will actually improve your gameplay and allow you to kind of use the methods not only in light tanks but also in mediums and your heavy and all of your tank destroyers within the game. So first things first, what do we need when actually playing light tanks? Well, one of the most important, in fact, almost crucial things that you put on your light tanks is the vision range perks, equipment, and also all of the essential consumables as well to just make sure that you are the one that's going to be spotting within the game as opposed to some of the other tanks that may be on your team and alternatively the enemy team. So what do I mean by this? Well, what you're going to have to have are things like advanced optics, advanced concealment. You could then even go with improved ventilation to boost up some of the crew skills and therefore have better view range. And yeah, alternatively, what we've gone with within the RU251, the tier 9 German light tank that we'll be featuring within today's gameplay as well later on in the video where we showcase how to actually play within the game. Yeah, we've gone with the gun stabilizer to make sure that on the odd occasion you can actually hit the target rather than just having to rely on your teammates to be able to hit them. Now with this setup, what does the advanced optics actually enable you to do within the game? Well, of course, it boosts up your view range. View range is a key attribute within World of Tanks that allows you to detect enemies within the gameplay, shows them up on your screen within the World War II game mode, and therefore you'll be able to actually uh, deal damage to them and potentially your teammate deal damage to them as well. And if they manage to deal damage when they couldn't have spotted them themselves, you'll receive additional experience and and assistance damage uh, onto that person and therefore you will have a better game yourself with the combined damage overall. Obviously what you want to make sure that you're doing in light tanks is kind of balancing out between assistance damage and actually getting damage yourself because if you are just purely relying on your teammates some games your teammates don't particularly do too well and so you have to be the forefront at which you can grant yourself damage and then hope that your teammate can get in some damage in between. Now with the concealment that just basically reduces the still concealment of your tank so essentially other tanks within the game on the enemy team will find it harder to actually detect you and therefore you can remain undetected you'll be invisible within the game um, and therefore yeah you'll have a better chance of surviving removing yourself from engagements going into positions that will allow you to basically remain undetected even when you are within very close proximity to the enemies if you use the gameplay mechanics right which we'll be featuring in just a second obviously consumables wise we always go with enhanced rations on a light tank regardless of what tier it is light tanks will be benefited by the, probably the most with enhanced rations because it boosts up the view range as well when you activate that as well as the uh, turning speed as well if you've got perks and stuff like that that actually boost that and coming on to the perks you want to make sure that you have six cents a absolutely crucial if not you must have this tank uh, this perk within your light tank because it allows you to know when you've been spotted and if someone else has outspotted you typically it's a light tank or a tank destroyer that has really really good camo so you need to know what you're going to be facing at any time within the game and also when you need to kind of move out of the position that you may be trying to hide in with this perk and it's so essential obviously then born leader we were then went with all of the situational awareness to boost the max view range green thumb uh, muffled shot and also camo expertise just so that we have all of the actual uh, expertise in terms of your camo so that you can then uh, reduce that still concealment and boost that vision range hence why you see the disparity of 230 meters between the vision range and the concealment meaning that yes your view range is almost double the speed uh, or double the distance of when you can actually get detected so very rarely do you get out spotted in your light tank if you use this kind of setup same for pretty much all of your tanks dependent on what you're actually running you can see here wz we did not run the advanced concealment because we're playing it a bit more like a brawling light tank so yeah but we still have the coated optics to boost up that vision 
But yeah, that is exactly what you want to be doing. Let's actually showcase how you can perform so well within the game using these light tanks and how you can outperform a lot of the heavy tanks in the game. And I'm sure a lot of you will probably not be enjoying the fact that some people are going to jump in their light tanks after this video, hopefully. So the first gameplay here on Canals, we are, of course, playing once again in the... Uh, German light tank, the RU251, and this is probably one of the better to be able to potentially spot a lot of the opponents within the game, and therefore you can then progress quite nicely uh, within it. Now, in terms of being able to spot within this game in particular, what you want to make sure that you're doing is getting yourself uh, up close and personal at the beginning of the game to spot the opponents. You don't want to be going all in. What I mean by up close and personal is you want to get within distance or view range of a lot of the opponents within this game. And this position right here is a perfect example of doing that. It allows you to get a lot of vision on anyone that tries to cross into the upper right corner of the map. And as you do that, you have a lot of teammates generally that will be able to get some shots or at least give you a little bit of assistance damage to kind of free up uh, the ability for you to play a little bit more flexible later on in the game because you've guaranteed at least a small amount of damage within the game so make sure that you're kind of thinking about that when actually playing obviously when you can make sure that you get the damage as well because you can see as we pump a shot into the bog horror there very nice indeed and we can go after another shot in the wt alf panzer 4 who we managed to track there and that's something you want to make sure that you're doing as well as we hit him once again so that's a nice few blind shots into him we're going to go for one more he isn't there anymore and so now we can kind of move out of the way or at least trying to open up a shot on someone else or re-spot him within this matchup so Obviously, you can see already we picked up 979 damage with one blind fire as well, uh, meaning we're probably higher in that, and 384 assistance all at the beginning of the game. A very, very easy way to earn yourself some credits, XP, and all of that uh, just at the beginning of the game. And a lot of people negate the early damage and the early spotting, which really can influence what you're going to do later on. So that is kind of an imperative that I would do within your light tanks. And this is why what separates basically someone that maybe could do well and someone that actually does well within the game. It's not necessarily that you have played bad or you haven't played uh, very well or whatever it may be, whatever you want to call it. A lot of the times it's just down to the fact that maybe you didn't understand the matchup or you didn't understand some of the positions and hopefully these type of videos where we look at some of the key things within the game uh, with regards to positions are going to allow you to then uh, make up a better match up and as you can see we're aiming always for the inner drive wheel of any tank that we fire at because if we can do that if we can lock them down and also deal damage we're going to be getting both the potential to get assistance damage as well as actual damage itself now one thing i do want to mention obviously aiming if you can aim properly within a light tank you get really rewarded as you can see us just pumping this amx 1390 here on the move we can just consistently hit him every single time make sure that you actually aim in front light tanks always have well typically i should say have good uh, shell velocity so the speed at which the tank round will come out of your tank uh, and hit the opponent that means that yes you'll be able to then get a decent amount of xp if you're hitting these rounds consistently and if you can manage to hit on the move as you see we can actually free aim as well and this is something you want to take advantage of maybe in a scenario where you're uh, they're moving very fast so a light tank typically will move very very fast on your screen so sometimes being in the sniper mode is not a good idea and yeah what you want to make sure is that sometimes you do use the best tactic for the situation that you may have got yourself into. Now already this has been a fantastic game but how can we push forward in a light tank? Well you can't go brawling in a light tank can you? Or at least you shouldn't necessarily go all in with a light tank because yes you do have pretty terrible uh, armor obviously for the most part unless you're playing maybe like a Chinese light tank or a Russian light tank like the T-54 lightweight. 
So if you are playing any paper tanks, and that goes for the RU-251, any of the British light tanks, they all have paper armour, and that's something that you need to kind of note down if you're thinking about getting a tank like this. So use the strengths of the tank. What do we have in the RU-251? Well, it's the fact that we fire super, super quickly, and the fact that we have really, really good accuracy, the typical German accuracy of the tank as we're hitting the cupola of the tortoise. Not Unfortunately for us, not managing to pen, as we say it, hitting the tortoise's cupola on the move backwards. Uh, yeah, very easy. Trying to go for a final one. Maybe we can get one more shot into the tortoise cupola here. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Easy, 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 easy. And when you're in a light tank, because you have such fast fire rate, you can actually dish out the damage really, really quickly. And you can also retrack opponents so you can keep people locked down very easily. And that's something you want to take advantage of. Obviously here we have a little bit of problem with the terrain which is a bit annoying uh, and we've also got three tanks in front of us so at this point most people would probably just sit here just try and trade one for one with a TD uh, a heavy and another heavy yeah if the T29 uses his brain which maybe he will maybe he won't he may come and just try and advance on us use the turret armor get hold down we're going to find it very very difficult to at least run away or get any sort of thing with that. So what we're going to do is use our brain now, but instead <laughs> thinking maybe he'll use his brain. Now with that, obviously, we're going to disengage from the target. We're a light tank. We have 500 meters view range. That's way higher than anyone else, uh, especially those in that tanks over there. Probably the one that's going to outspot us the most is the Super Hellcat, which yeah is a tier 7 that's two tiers lower and it won't have 500 meters view range and it definitely won't have the still concealment values um, enable enabling it to actually remain undetected for the most part obviously you can see here 4644 damage this is in a light tank this is exactly the reason why I do enjoy playing the light tanks. It's the versatility. And as we set the Waffentrager Alf Panzer IV on fire there, very, very nice. And he obviously tried to snap a shot into us, uh, but it didn't work out very well for him hitting into the ground in front of us. So already 5,400 damage in a light tank is a, or a great result. Obviously 1,100 assistance, not necessarily the highest assistance damage game, but we have been kind of lone wolfing over on this side of the map. So first misplay of the game probably here as we manage to auto aim the Super Hellcat here. Now what we do is take a very wide arc as we get close to the Super Hellcat. Then what we're going to do is just go up close and personal to him and second misplay of the game. <laughs> over rotating using the handbrake not a good shot so third misplay of the game we decide we're just going to try and throw our hit points away against the super hellcat here now it's just time if we don't mess this up it's going to be very easy just give him a little nudge and therefore take him out of the game obviously could have played better at the end bit of a miss one misplay but yeah picking up even more damage within this game taking that super hellcat right out of the game and of course coming up with a victory 5,901 damage in a light tank. Yes, it's not a medium. It's not a heavy. It's not a tank destroyer. It, this is a light tank and picking up that much damage. This is what you want to be doing in your light tanks. Not necessarily camping at the back trying to snipe or whatever it is. But on the odd occasion where you do have to carry a flank, that's exactly what you want to do. And with 1904 XP, you can graciously go straight forward with the tech tree line of the tank. And yeah, definitely pick up some really nice rewards as well as you go through and it will help you towards any of the contracts that are currently out within World of Tanks so that's always a good benefit good sort of thing that you can come up with and of course within the game we did pick up four enemies destroyed 1076 assistance bringing the grand total up to nearly 7000 total damage combined and of course mastery badge within the game picking up a lot of xp as well for the first win of the day i believe and yeah really progressing us fast through the german light tank tech tree the next gameplay for today is on Westfield, one of the newer revamped maps coming back into the game, into World of Tanks. Uh, we are going to be, of course, going up onto the hill. Now, this is not necessarily the only option within this map when playing uh, light tanks. You can, of course, go to the right hand side and use that area to be able to get some vision onto people that may be camping uh, on that right hand side, typically TDs. But for us, we're going to play very aggressive within this game. We want to be the forefront of our team to be able to detect a lot of the 
opponents that we're going to come up against. And if we can do that, we're going to have a much better game. And if we can successfully do that very nicely, then yeah, we could potentially get uh, a few hundred XP more if we manage to ha pull off the game indeed. So with this game, we're going to crest the ridge line. This is what you want to do in your um, light tank is make sure that you are kind of foot forefront. You don't want to go right over. The first thing that I want to mention is that a lot of light tanks will be super, super aggressive to the point where they're going over ridge lines to get early damage. And of course, we could have just potentially taken a hit right there, which wouldn't have been good, but we'll get the artillery out of the game. Definitely worth it for that. Obviously, Picking up a little bit of damage early on is always good, uh, but not at the cost of losing, you know, 90% of your hit points. Because when you're in a light tank, often every single round that hits you is going to be able to pen. And when you when you're like trying to get better and when you're trying to learn the game, when you're trying to think, you actually have to be in the game. So definitely don't lose your hit points early on. And light tanks typically become stronger as you go on throughout the game. So the longer you're alive, the better you'll probably perform because as you get further on, you'll have much better view range, which means you can single out people uh, later on rather than when there's like three or four tanks all bunched up together as we've got right now. When it comes to the later half, you can go all in against a lot of people and you'll be able to get some better results well within this game obviously 490 damage is not particularly great but 347 assistance is nothing to sniff at um, and if we can manage to get just any more damage we are in a tier 10 heavy game where there's a lot of tier 10s within the game especially when they're heavy tank gets it becomes a little bit more difficult to be able to pen obviously now we load the heat rounds because light tanks typically have pretty bad penetration on their standard rounds that's kind of one of the caveats of playing a light tank uh, and so yeah you do have to be mindful of that make sure that when you do need premium rounds that you do load them obviously it's very dependent on the time uh, we do try and go with one but it hits the conqueror there which is unfortunate and only <laughs> managed to pick up 700 combined on that one flank over here but this is the point in the game this is the reason why i wanted to showcase this video as opposed to some of the other gameplays i've had in the ru251 it's not about the fact that you know you've can pick up loads and loads of damage that was what the previous replay was all about but this one is all about being the forefront making sure that you are the one that's going to be pushing forward spotting the opponents driving your team towards the enemies because if you can do that a lot of the time i find losses happen when people are too too passive within the game they just kind of oh should we take a hit for this should we take one hit between seven of us to be able to progress this flank or are we all just kind of going to wait and hope that this tech guy just somehow magically misses a shot and we can all rush him no what you need to do is just go in you need to take the hit be the one that sometimes just goes forward takes that one hit then your team can progress and therefore you can then open up the map get the view range and deal much more damage and as you can see within this game we've managed to pick up 3,000 spotting damage it's the reward for being the forefront not all the time will you want to be on the forefront and sometimes it doesn't work out as nicely as you might have wanted uh, but if you do use the tank as it's designed it is a light tank it's supposed to be the one that pushes it gets vision onto the opponents you're the one that spots tanks and if you can do that it always ends up quite well and you're going to be able to perform probably better than if you were trying to just snipe with the light tank because you don't have good dpm you have typically very low um, alpha damage which means yes you won't be able to typically get as much damage as maybe you'd like and so yeah sometimes being aggressive is always good within the game and as you saw there picking up the amx 1390 which is a very soft squishy light tank that doesn't really weigh too much when you're in a german thick heavy ru251 you'll be able to ram a lot of the opponents so Take that into account as well when you're deciding what you're going to do with your tank. If you're in a pretty light light tank, if that makes sense, sometimes you have things like the T-54 lightweight, which is, of course, a much heavier tank. But in an RU-251, you're a bit of a heavier one. But then if you look at something like the Manticore or some of the Seta or whatever, they're very, very slow and weak. Uh, and so, yeah, you can ram into them. 
Obviously, a pretty decent combined damage game, 5,300 and a bit within that game. Very, very nice indeed. And of course, a very quick one, 4 minutes and 47 seconds. And it's probably because we were the ones at the forefront kind of pushing the game forward. I'm not taking all of the credit, but if you are the one that can then push your team forward, give them an advantage, give them some sort of vision within the game to be able to get damage very easily against some of the opponents. That is where your light tanks come in. And hopefully you did in enjoyed this video if you did remember to hit the like button and tell me if you want to see more videos like this for all of the different classes we can go into more detail with some of the light tanks how to use bush mechanics stuff like that all of that sort of thing is always very kindly appreciated if you leave that in the comment section down below and also make sure to check out some of the other gameplay where we look and analyze some gameplay uh, that i have within world of tanks console so thank you very much for watching i hope you'll join me in the next one goodbye